Good morning, brothers and sisters, Pax et Bonu. First of all, I'd like to thank those who, the organizers who invited me to share with you a bit of history, a bit of the history of the devotion of Our Lady of Lourdes here in the Philippines, which was introduced to all of us by the Capuchins. I'd like to start off with a quotation from St. Pius X from Manilensium Archiepiscopus. This is the document which establishes the uh, solidarity of Our Lady of Lourdes in the Philippines. The devotion to the Virgin of Lourdes was introduced in the Philippine Islands through the work of the Capuchin Friars Minor. Before that, the number of the faithful who knew of the marvelous deeds done by the miraculous Virgin was very minimal because the fame of the well-known sanctuary of Lourdes had not yet reached that remote region. We could establish the entrance or influx of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes because one of our friaries is very close to Our Lady of Lourdes, the shrine in, in France. No? It is at the tip of Navarra. This is San Sebastian. Actually, the patron of that convent, the patron of that church is also Our Lady of Lourdes. And perhaps because of the devotion also of the friars, they opted to bring that devotion to the Philippines when they became missionaries of the Philippines. The story of the devotion to the Virgin of Lourdes in the Philippines started in 1892, when Father Berardo de Ciesa, OFM Capuchin, the superior of the Capuchins in Intramuros, when we have had a footing of our mission in the Philippines, requested a Filipino sculptor, Manuel Flores, to carve an image of Our Lady of Lourdes, which is intended to be placed at the grotto near the entrance to the convent. We would see here that from the very start, our friars, our Capuchin friars, had also had already this devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes. If not, they would not have asked a well-known sculptor, Manuel Flores, to carve an image of Our Lady of Lourdes. However, when the image was done and was placed in the grotto of the convent in Intramuros, some people were so charmed by the grace and beauty of the image that they requested the fathers to put, an, uh, to put it in the altar inside the, cap, the chapel of the Capuchins. You know, the image was exquisitely beautiful and everybody felt that it would be a pity to leave it exposed to the elements. After the image was enthroned inside the church, the Virgin of Lourdes began mesmerizing people. On February 1893, the first novena in her honor gathered together many devotees who then spread the good news all over Manila. Later, a group of persons desirous of establishing this beautiful devotion asked Father Superior to found a confraternity under the patronage of Our Lady of Lourdes. One of those who requested the establishment of the confraternity was Mr. Regino Garcia, a famous Filipino botanist and naturalist. On the 23rd of May, 1893, Father Berardo de Ciesa asked the Archbishop of Manila for permission to establish a confraternity. The decree of erection was granted by the Archbishop Bernardo Bernardino Nosaleda, a Dominican, on the 15th of September, 1893. The, this confraternity was subsequently affiliated to the Arch Confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes in France 
and was granted a diploma of aggregation on the 4th of December, 1895. Thus solidarity, or the solidarity favored by God grew shortly in such an extraordinary way. And so many faithful joined it, which is considered rightly among the principal confraternities of the Philippine Islands. Actually, the arch confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes is said to be the only arch confraternity outside of France. And because of the many devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes, the many members of the confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes, the devotion really spread throughout the islands. In 1894, because of the growing devotion to the Virgin of Lourdes, Father de Siesta again asked Mr. Flores to make a bigger and more beautiful image of Our Lady. This new image was sculpted by Mr. Flores, assisted by a Capuchin friar, Father Antonio de Valencia, OFM Capuchin, who was considered as a model Capuchin missionary and an artist of exquisite taste. In a workshop within the convent of the Capuchins in Intramuros and was sponsored by a certain Mrs. Carmen Macan. She is from Pampanga. When the image was finished, it was truly a masterpiece of art that apostolic delegate to the Philippines, that time Archbishop Lacide Louis Chapelle, who was himself a French citizen and who had visited the sanctuary in Lourdes many times, was himself awed by the beauty of this image. Upon the completion of this image, it was immediately enthroned inside the church in Intramuros, replacing the smaller one, which was transferred inside the convent of the Capuchin Fathers. So there are two images at first, a small image, and then after two years, a bigger image, which became actually the center of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes. This big image that was carved is actually now enthroned at the National Shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes. That is without a doubt, the image in Intramuros. Because of the growing number of devotees, the new superior of the Capuchins in the in Intramuros, this time, Father Alfonso de Morentin, OFM Capuchin, decided to enlarge the church so that all the devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes, because it has got, it, it has achieved so much popularity and fame could be accommodated. This was made possible through the assistance of Mrs. Pelagia Vasquez, Mrs. Carmen Macan again, and engineer Jose Garcia Moron, the architect of the new church in Intramuros. We are talking about the church in Intramuros was Mr. Federico Soler. The construction of the church began in the month of September 1897. At this time, the titular of the Capuchin Church in Intramuros was still the mother of the Good Shepherd, La Divina Pastora. Now, La Divina Pastora is the patron of the Spanish missions. And the image of La Divina Pastora is at the center altar the main altar of the church in Intramuros at the beginning. At the side, at the side altar, you would see then the image of Our Lady of Lourdes. While construction for the new church was ongoing, the Spanish-American War started, threatening Manila with bombardment. Father Bienvenido wrote about this incident. On the 1st of May, 1898, the powerful U.S. Navy appeared in Manila, destroying easily the small Spanish fleet and asking the surrender of the city in 24 hours, threatening, on the contrary, 
with an intense bombardment of the city. In these moments, an anguished, waiting, anguished people waiting when the deadline for surrender was already at hand and the Spanish authorities had not yet given any signs of accepting it. The father superior of the Capuchin friars, Alfonso de Morentin, prostrated before the venerated image of Our Lady of Lourdes and in the name of the whole Capuchin community gathered there for the pious exercise of the flowers of May, promised solemnly to the Virgin of Lourdes to dedicate to her the new church that they were building if she would save the house and the city of Manila from the terrible destruction of the announced bombing. Through the divine providence, the bombardment did not happen and peace was to re restored in Manila. Hence, the construction of the church, although disrup disrupted briefly by the threat of war, was continued until it was completed. On the 22nd of September, 1898, the Archbishop gave permission to bless the church and on the 24th of September, the church was solemnly inaugurated as the first church in the Philippines dedicated to Our Lady of Lourdes. Father Bien Bienido de Arbeza wrote the following about the inauguration. Father Morentin, faithful to his promise of consecrating to the Virgin of Lourdes the new church, now wished to fulfill the promise by placing the venerated image of Our Lady of Lourdes at the main altar, singing at the same a solemn, that's solemn te deum. In this way, the Virgin of Lourdes was officially proclaimed the titular of the church of the Capuchins. The faculty to change the titular of the church was obtained from Rome on February 3, 1899. So you would see there the change of the titulars of the church in Intramuros. No, from La Divina Pastora to La Virgen de Lourdes. No, because of a promise, no, because Father Morentin no, asked the Virgin for help. And he promised that if this promise is fulfilled, no, the, if the prayer is fulfilled, they would put the venerated image of Our Lady of Lourdes into the main altar. No, that, is, that happened in Intramuros. But besides that, there have been already a lot of devotees to Our Lady of Lourdes. From the Church of the Capuchins in Intramuros, the devotion of the Virgin of Lourdes spread throughout the Philippines. It's a small church, yet the devotion spread. The habit of Lourdes, a white dress, with a long blue sash was worn by the ladies. And it has become a common sight in Manila and in the provinces. We could still see those, the habit being worn by members of the confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes. By 1904, there were counted 3,524 registered members of the confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes. The Capuchins distributed thousands of novenas. Of course, the main reason for the rapid spread of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes was the abundant spiritual and material favors granted by the Lord through the devotion or through the intercession to Our Lady. There were a lot of miracles that were answered through the prayers of Our Lady of Lourdes. Devotees themselves became the best promoters of the devotion. You know? Even if the Capuchins were the initiators of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes, the devotees themselves were the ones who really spread out the devotion 
throughout the country, there were a lot of confraternities that were established and were affiliated to the arch confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes. These devotees brought the devotion with them and established it wherever they went, in their homes, in their work, and in the parishes where they took up residence. On February 1908, the golden jubilee of the apparitions in Lourdes, the first solemn procession of Our Lady of Lourdes was held in Intramuros. How this was made possible is again told by Father Bienvenido de Arbeza as follows. When Father Rector asked for suggestions from them to do something new and extraordinary on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the apparitions, the illustrious Catholic writer, Mr. Manuel Ravago stood up and in brilliant exposition, he defended that the most opportune thing would be to organize a big procession on the last day of the Novena, if possible, to be done on Sunday for greater solemnity. This was the first procession ever of the Virgin of Lourdes that after that had been done every year. Our Lady of Lourdes proved herself miraculous, especially in gathering together children. Her children, her cult spread like wildfire and the new church became insufficient again to the growing number of the devotees of the Virgin. The amazingly rapid spread of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes soon forced the Capuchins to plan and build a bigger and more beautiful church dedicated to Our Lady. On October 1905, during a meeting with a visitor general, Dr. Father Daniel de Ar Arbasegui, Father Alfonso asked permission to extend and embellish the church. And Father Daniel readily granted the request. In order to accomplish this project, many devotees went around Manila to solicit help. At the same time, some friars were also sent to the provinces in order to ask support for the completion of the project. On February 3, 1910, this church, which was funded completely with alms donated by numerous, numerous devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes, was inaugurated by Archbishop Jeremiah Harty of Manila. It was not only the physical structure in Intramuros that needed extensions and embellishments. Many parishes were already requesting affiliation of their sodalities of Our Lady of Lourdes to the Manila Confraternity. To accommodate them, Father Alfonso requested the Pope through the Archbishop to raise the Manila Confraternity to the rank of Arch Confraternity. This is what I was saying early on. You know, the confraternity of the, the, that church in Intramuros was raised you know, through to become an Arch Confraternity. An Arch Confraternity, the only one, it seems, to be established outside of France. The request was granted by Pope St. Pius X through the apostolic letter Malilensium Archiepiscopus, dated the 27th of August, 1910. Since then, the Manila Arch Confraternity possessed the faculty of affiliating all the local confraternities dedicated to Our Lady of Lourdes throughout the Philippines. In 1926, there were more than 50,000, 15,000 members affiliated to the Arch Confraternity. In the out outbreak of the Second World War, the severe test to the devotion and the devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes was very evident. In February, 1945, immediately after the days of the Novena of Our Lady of Lourdes, 
which has just started, the church and the convent of the Capuchins were completely destroyed during the liberation of Madilla. Among those destroyed are the archives of the missions and of the arch confraternity. Many important documents were forever lost, including the official records, books, and materials for the propagation of the devotion. However, the venerable image of Our Lady of Lourdes was saved from devastation. When the friars left the convent before the raid, they brought with them the image of Our Lady of Lourdes to the church of San Agustin, which was designated as a place of refuge. From the wide sacri sacristy of San Agustin, they continued the novena, which they have just started back in her church on the 3rd of February. Unfortunately, the six Capuchin friars living in Intramuros, including the Father Superior, Father Florencio de Lesaun, OFM Capuchin, together with the other many religious and other refugees inside the Church of San Agustin were killed by the Japanese in their retreat. In the month of March, the other friars who survived the terrible war went back to the Church of San Agustin to rescue the image of Our Lady of Lourdes. Father Bienvenido de Arbeza, OFM Cap, was now the new superior of the mission, succeeding Father Florencio, who was killed during the war. He was the one who personally retrieved the image of Our Lady. This is his testimony. On the first of days of March, we tried to go to San Agustin. Thanks to the help of Father McCarthy, OSA, we got the image and in a truck brought it to the chapel of the University of Santo Tomas. On Palm Sunday of that year, when the images of the saints were covered with veils, the Dominicans brought it to the sacristy. And then on May, we carried it to our chapel in Santa Teresita for the celebrations of Flores de Mayo. From the chapel of Santa Teresita, Father Bienvenido started all over again. It was from this church that the devotion began to rise again from the ashes of war. With the help of Mrs. Josefina Africa de Marques, the president of the Arch Confraternity, the solemn novena and the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes was celebrated on February 1946. The chapel was not big enough for the crowd that gathered for the solemn procession on February 10 and the solemn feast on February 11. Distinguished guests graced the first novena and feast of Our Lady of Lourdes after the war. The wife of the President of the Republic, Mrs. Trinidad de Rojas, assisted at the novena. And one of the days, even the President, Manuel Rojas himself, attended the Mass. Father Arbeza also began reorganizing the Arch Confraternity and reaching out to the different confraternities scattered all over the Philippines. In 1948, the Arch Confraternity had a meeting for the first time after the war. It was decided to send a survey to all the parishes in the Philippines in order to recreate the profile of the devotion to Our Lady. In his testimony, he said, we sent a questionnaire to all parishes and places of devotion. All in all, around 2000 letters in which we asked information about the existence or not of this confraternity of Lourdes and its actual situation. Around 90% answered, and there were groups of people that belonged to it, but very few had canonical and official approval. Around 40% of the parishes of the Philippines, according to the answers, do the novena to Our Lady of Lourdes. About 20% of the parish churches 
and other churches of devotion have the image of Our Lady of Lourdes and around 10% have their own altar. The year 1949 gave a good sign for the renewal of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes. Father Bienvenido testified to the wonderful celebration and feast of Our Lady. The little church in Santa Teresita was marvelously transformed into a jewel. In the middle of the altar, with her sweet look toward heaven, was the Blessed Virgin of Lourdes. At her feet, the devotees from Manila and surrounding provinces had placed a garden of Asocenas. On Sunday, as traditional, was the procession of candles. The white blue ribbon of the Virgin of the Pyrenees appeared brilliant and radiant in a beautiful carosa. All were singing the Virgin to the Virgin, the Ave of Lourdes. The procession covered approximately two kilometers. It was a marvelous vision when at night the procession came back to the church in a sea of candles, a sea of prayers, and a sea of hearts. They were, there were around 50,000 candles that accompanied the Virgin, and the Novena continued until the Feast of the Virgin, which was the high point of the devotion. The numerous devotions, devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes showed interest in rebuilding the church in Intramuros. But when that proved impractical, they centered their efforts in building a new church in honor of Our Lady of Our, Our Lady of Lourdes in Retiro Street in La Loma, Quezon City. When they went back to Intramuros, tried to rebuild the church, they saw that it was practically you know, destroyed and that it was Intramuros then after the war was a deserted place. And so they opted, you know, the friars and the devotees opted to rebuild a new church, to build a new church in Manila, in Quezon City, particularly in Retiro. The blessing of the cornerstone of the projected new church was held on January 29, 1950, presided by Archbishop Miguel Angel Olano, OFM CAP, the Archbishop Emeritus of Guam. The sponsors during the ceremony were the Honorable Ignacio Santos Diaz, the Mayor of Quezon City, together with Mr. Salvador Araneta, Mrs. Natividad Saragosa Tuason, who represented the Araneta and Tuason families, who donated the land for the new church. The work for the construction immediately began the following day. Mr. Luis Maria Araneta was the architect, while Mr. Emi Marquez was the constructor. After a year of constructor de construction, this new sanctuary was able to receive the image of Our Lady of Lourdes and her devoted children. The image of Our Lady was transferred to this new shrine on February 10, on the eve of the feast, 1951, after a huge and solemn procession from the Church of Santa Teresita, presided by Archbishop Olano and was attended by thousands of devotees. Again, we have this account from Father Arbiesa. At 4 p.m. on February 10, the surroundings of Santa Teresita was filled with a huge crowd. The beautiful image of the Virgin not yet gone, had not yet gone out of the church in Santa Teresita, yet the head of the procession is already entering the new church in La Loma. The whole distance from one church to uh, the other is about a kilometer and a half and was completely covered without any empty space in lines of 10 people abreast. It was a thing worthy to be seen in a long procession. So finally, 
the virgin is enthroned in its new in her new home in Quezon City from Intramuros to San Agustin to UST to Santa Teresita then to her new shrine in Quezon City the following day which is the first feast of our lady of lords the new church was blessed privately by father custos so that the masses can be celebrated from the day that day on after a few months this new church was solemnly inaugurated by the archbishop of manila gabriel reyes on the 15th of august 1951 among the distinguished guests during the ceremony was the president of the senate of the philippines mr mariano jesus cuenco and some representatives of the spanish embassy the interior of the new church was like that of the capuchin church in san antonio saragossa spain if you would go to spain in saragossa the church of saint anthony of padua actually no, the sanctuary of Our Lady of Lourdes Church, the National Shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes Church now in Quezon City is sort of a duplicate of you know, that church in San Antonio in Saragossa, Spain. It's very similar or if not the same. You know? On the 3rd of February, 1987, the church was declared as an archdiocesan shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes by Arch the Archbishop of Manila, Jaime Cardinal Sin. And 10 years later, on the 24th of January, 1997, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines granted to the church the title of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes. The new church of Our Lady of Lourdes in Retiro became the new center of devotion to the Virgin of Lourdes. This is a church from where Our Lady continues to shower abundantly her graces to the devotees. It also serves as the center of the Arch Confraternity, which keeps alive the devotion of Our Lady of Lourdes that began in Intramuros and was interrupted by the war. In 1955, there were 156 confraternities affiliated to the Arch Confraternity. It is also during this year that the first issue of the newsletter of the Arch Confraternity, Ave Maria, was published. In 1958, there were about 300 confraternities of Our Lady of Lourdes. This was a fitting gift to Our Lady for the centenary of the apparitions. From the new church was celebrated with great solemnity the, festiv the festivities of the centennial of our apparition of Our Lady of Lourdes. The crowd was so impressive that the fathers were able to record a total of 35,000 Holy Communions during the nine-day novena and 9,000 communions during the feast day. During the blessing of the sick, the fathers were able to assist 2,500 sick people. Among the devotees who flocked to the shrine during the centennial apparition was none other than the president of the Republic of the Philippines himself, Mr. Carlos Garcia, together with the first lady, Mrs. Leonila de Mataga Garcia. The story of the devotion of Our Lady of Lourdes in the Philippines, which started in Intramuros, still continues up to this day for the new shrine in Quezon City. The members of the Arch Confraternity continue to propagate the devotion. Every three years, the Arch Confraternity gathers together all the confraternities in the country for a national convention. The gatherings of the representatives from every confraternity is held in different places in the country. 
in order to reach, to reach out to all the devotees of Our Lady of Lourdes in every corner of the archipelago. For more than a century, the whole white dress with a blue sash worn by the ladies all of all class and age is considered as one of the visible signs of the Filipinos' devotion and love to Our Lady. The Arch Confraternity seeks to always honor the Virgin of Lourdes, who have continuously favored this country since she was introduced by the Capuchins in 1892. From her first home in Intramuros to its present sanctuary in Quezon City, the image of Our Lady of Lourdes with her beautiful heavenward gaze continues to draw her devotees toward her son for 100, more than 125 years. Last August, 2010, we celebrated the centenary of the Arch Confraternity of Our Lady of Lourdes. His, Excel His Excellency, Oneson Tioko, the Bishop of the New Diocese of the Diocese of Cubao, crowned the image canonically last August 22, 20. 20, no, in the name of the Holy Father, no, the, the, the canonical crowning, no, some of the friars even say, no, that the canonical crowning of the image of Our Lady of Lords is a bit delayed already because the Our Lady of Lords has so much impacted the Filipinos in their devotion to our Blessed Mother. It is a fitting tribute to Our Lady to canonically crown Our Lady of Lourdes. And you would see not only the confraternities spread throughout the archipelago, but it is a usual you know, scene or a scenario that you would see almost you know, in every house you know, which has a garden, you would see a grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes. You know? That is also a proof that the devotion of the Filipinos to Our Lady of Lourdes, which started in Intramuros by our forefathers, Capuchin forefathers, had really spread throughout the archipelago. And we hope that we still continue our devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes. And it still is strong. No? The Filipino devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes remain stronger as ever to Our Blessed Mother. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope I was able to at least give you a bit of the history of our Lady of Lourdes devotion. Now, we would like to entertain questions from our audience. To moderate our open forum, I would like to turn the virtual floor over to Mr. Brian B. De La Pena. Thank you, uh, Princess. Thank you, Leonard. And uh, again, once again, good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, staying with us here uh, on this uh, uh, webinar of our Beyond Persian Kula series. Uh, you can see now on, on your screens uh, some uh, simple guidelines, really. Uh, if you want to participate on this open forum, you can just submit your name, your affiliation, uh, and uh, your question. Because as, as we know, uh, uh, looks like we have a lot of viewers uh, uh, joining us uh, in this uh, webinar. And uh, may, may we have uh, Father Eugene? You're, yeah, yes, Father Eugene is still with us. Yeah, good morning, Father. And, good morning. Uh, you know, you know, it's great to be uh to be speaking to you again after how many years, Bayon? The, the first time I spoke to you, Father, I don't know if you remember, was in two thousand eight when I and I missed this in the introduction when you were vice rector. Yeah. Tama, Father. Yes, I vice was. rector of Lourdes School, Quezon City, and then I don't know if you time. remember this small kid who 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 <laughs> entered your office, and then he asked you a lot of motherhood questions. That <laughs> yeah, 
And yeah, if if and if there is one keyword that I would remember from that interview is the word enriched. No, I, I don't know if you remember that, but it, it it the memory is still with me. Enriched and which is something that you know I can I can uh you know still still mention today enriched. Uh would you believe it, Father? Not uh, based on your on your lecture today, based on your on what you said today. It was an image, a sculpture that enriched the devotion of yes, our indeed. kababayans, of our Filipinos, right? It, it's uh, yeah. it's not just some you know sculpture, not just some image. It it was something deeper than that, don't you think, Father? Yes, actually, if you look, you you could only see the image from afar because it's so high at the main altar. Now we had a replica done, which was used during the procession during the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes this year. No? But if you would get a closer view of the image no, of Our Lady of Lourdes, it really is an exquisite piece of art and it's very theological. No? What really, the, the Virgin is, is looking heavenward. No? He, she's not looking down, she's looking heavenward and she was it seems that she's saying, no, you look up. You always look up to heaven. No, look, no, do not be earthbound, but look to heaven and do whatever you can here on earth so that you would at last no, be in heaven also with me and my son and the father. No, And if you would see... you. The first time I really saw the image very close was when we were doing the the incarna. No, we were no putting it back to its more or less original original state. No, uh, close to that. No, you would see the details that were done by Manuel Flores was no. He is a really a very good artist because the details done on the image was no so so perfect no would you do you know do you know that the the the, the image had do not does not have her feet on the ground nakatingkayad she oh nakatingkayad na she was on her actually tiptoe she was no it's not uh hindi siya naka, hindi nakalapat yung yung paa niya sa 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 bato na kanyang tinatayuan kundi mm -hmm. naka tiptoe siya na parang pataas pataas talaga yung yung movement ng ng mahal na ina and some are saying that Flores captured that moment when on during the apparition of our lady of lords on March 25 when she said no to Bernadette Subiru and introduced her name to Bernadette Subiru, that she was saying, I am the Immaculate Conception. And she looked heavenward no, during that, that uh, apparition. And she was actually no, nakatipto yung, yung image. No? Kaya napakaganda talaga nung imahin. Kaya the, the, the devotees really draw no, from what they see no, sa image sa Blessed Mother, imahe ng mahal na ina na napakaganda. And I guess, no, the Blessed Mother is even more beautiful than that when you see her, no, personally. No, kasi nga, even Bernadette Subiru, when he, she saw the image done in Lourdes, France, she was quite disappointed. No, because she said, she's beautiful than that. You know? Pero this, we have an image of of Our Lady of Lourdes, which is an admired even by by the French Archbishop, no, and perhaps when we see the Blessed Mother, talagang napakaganda niya talaga, no? hindi indescribable talagang kanyang kaganda. Indeed, Father, and and you know again the 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 beauty of uh, of uh, the image, it's it's not just it doesn't just speak of her beauty, but also the beauty of the devotion. Of uh, mm -hmm. you know, are, are, of of uh, uh, Filipinos, right? Who 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 have 
you know, transcended, like, sabi ko kanina, transcended time, transcended location, transcended place, no? Na kahit mga pa-intramuros man yan sa Santo Tomas o sa Retiro, mm-hmm. nandun pa rin, naroon pa rin. At buhay na buhay ang uh, debosyon, ang pamimintuho ng pamiminto na lang ulit si Father Jeff. Pamimintuho <laughs> ng mga tao uh, sa kay Inang Maria. Now we have a question. Uh, actually, while, while, the talk, while your lecture was ongoing, may nagtanong na. Uh, and uh, this person is taking interest uh, or in, is interested in uh, one of our images of Our Lady of Lourdes sa simbahan. No? He's, he's a lay Dominican. Uh, his name is Achilles Peralta of the Order of Preachers. He's from the Young Tomasian Professionals Lay Dominican Group. And his question goes like this. Father, was the current best up yes? Uh, for, for, for those who are watching us uh, on Facebook, uh, best up yes uh, is uh, the image of Our Lady of Lourdes at the left side of the church. When you enter the National Shrine, you go to the left, then that's, that's, that's where the best up yes is. No? Was the current best of yes the original Manuel Flores image? Because there seems to be a debate online whether or not it is. And in a previous talk by uh, Bishop, I'm guessing because he, he's just mentioned the surname now, but I'm guessing this is Bishop Joseph Nakwa of Lord Capuchin Order of Friars Minor at Ensol. He mentioned that the best of yes is the original venerated image. Can we confirm this, Father? There's really a controversy with regard to the smaller image, no? the one that they call the Besapies. No? Actually, the Besapies, the term Besapies, is really attributed to the bigger image to, in, in, in history. No? Because during the novenas of Our Lady of Lourdes in Intramuros, and even I think during Santa Teresita, no? the image is brought down from the high altar and no, so that the, their devotees could actually, her devotees could actually kiss the feet of Our Lady of Lourdes, the two roses there, no, the feet of Our Lady of Lourdes. And that is why it is called, that, that, that particular rite is called Ceremonia de la Besa Pies. No, it's Besa, Beso, Kiss, Pies, Feet, no, Besa Pies. It is absolutely sure that the one at the main altar is the image in Intramuros. No, there are a lot of accounts. No, there are accounts because there are discrepancies with regard to the accounts. No, even Arbeza himself has a discrepancy with her with his accounts. Sometimes he would say that he saved one image. Sometimes he would say two images were saved. But when he published the book you know, of the history of the Capuchins in the Philippines, he was specifically referring to only one image. And that is the image in the high altar. I was a young friar and some of the, our elderly friars when I was in initial formation had said, without a doubt, that one on the high altar, the main altar of Our Lady of Lourdes is that image in Intramuros. And so therefore, when we did the canonical coronation uh, petition, we asked the Holy Father because we knew that that image came from Intramuros and that was that image was actually the start of not when the devotion to that image was attributed the 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 i said the impulse of the devotion to our lady of lords to yung kasagsagan ng devotion sa our lady of lords sa ating mahal na ina ay nagsimula talaga doon sa malaking image kaya we opted to petition the Holy Father, to canonically crown the, the bigger image. Now, the small image, we are not at the very start of our process for the canonical coronation. We were not really sure if indeed it was the original Manuel Flores. No, because no, there are features of that image which is not seen in the bigger image. 
No? And so we thought it might not be the original Manuel Flores image. So we proceeded with the canonical coronation no? and really concentrating on the bigger image. And besides, the canonical coronation was a petition because of the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes, no matter what image is there. No? And so that smaller image, we tried to research. We saw that the bigger image has an accompanying document that it is indeed the one from uh, Intramuros. The smaller image, we did not have any document which accompanied it, no? Because Arbesa always refer refers to the bigger image, etc. The smaller image, it seemed, was eclipsed. No, he did not say anything about it anymore after the war. And, but when we, after the canonical coronation had already been done, you know, we contacted our confers in Spain because that smaller image, after it was moved from the side altar in Intramuros, was placed in the convent in the Porteria of the convent, no? in the Porteria of the convent. That smaller image was placed there in the Porteria, porteria the, of the, 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 the convent in Intramuros. And no, I, we asked for pictures of the Porteria. And we saw indeed a smaller image in the Porteria. It looks like the one they call the Besa Pies. It looks like the one <laughs> they call the Besa Pies. It could be the one that is called the Besa Pies, but we are still not yet absolutely sure about it. But it looks like the one that they call the Besa Pies. No. But to be absolutely sure that it is the, the original Manuel Flores, no, we still are no, we still are not yet sure about that. But no, what I'm saying here that it could be the original Manuel Flores. Okay. Wow. It could be. It it may look like. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So at least that's what uh, we know at the moment. We will mm -hmm. go back to this uh, discussion on on the image in just a little bit. But for now, let's. Uh, we have this question from should we say isang soki natin sa Brian Persong uh, Brian Persong pala webinar series. Welcome back, John Brian Kabahog. Uh, he's a history major from the University of Santo Tomas, and he says, I would like to ask what documents remain in the present archives that refer to the propagation of the devotion of Our Lady of Lourdes in the Philippines during the early years of Capuchin presence in the country? As I have said, the documents of the Arch Confraternity in Intramuros was destroyed during the war. No, but we have no in the present archives of uh, the capuchins no some of the old duvinas some of the lists of the different confraternities the books of the confraternities there i i saw them some of of the uh, books which pertain also to to the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes, a few books, I guess two or three books, compilations of how Intramuros looked like, how, and also the different duvinas, you know, the devotions to Our Lady of Lourdes, the lists of the confraternities are there in the archives. And some of the Spanish accounts of uh, the letters of, of Arbesa. No, they're in, in the archives of Our Lady of Lourdes. But I guess they, the, those who were real, the documents really who are, which are in Intramuros are no longer there because they were all destroyed during the war. That's a very unfortunate 
Yes, uh, it is. Yeah, it is a very unfortunate part of our history, no. And uh, it it's uh and and this has this is has been uh, uh mentioned in previous lectures, no. How how there is that uh, um should I say shortage of uh, records or in in the history of Franciscan Capuchins in uh, yes. in the Philippines. That's why we are fortunate to be here talking about this now because this is actually new information to many of us myself included no uh and it's great that we are talking about this uh back to the image of uh our lady of lords okay here we have questions from our students first one is from carlos joaquin garcia hi uh joaquin good morning to you he asks well he first says there are two images as we know uh, of Our Lady of Lourdes in Ensol, the Besa Pies, and yes. the Besa Manto. Besa Manto, right? Okay. Last August, uh, in 2020, only the altar image was given the canonical coronation. Now, is there a possibility that the smaller image, the Besa Pies, will receive the same pontifical recognition? It is a possibility, <laughs> no. But you crown an image, you no, know, because of a devotion. No, you crown an image because there is a following. There is a devotion. You do not crown an image because of just plainly because of his. It's historical. No, it's it's old, It's an old image. Let's crown it, etc. No, so you crown an image because. It has you know, encouraged or influenced people to be devoted, this time particularly, to the Blessed Mother. You know? Although the smaller image, if it is indeed the Manuel Flores, was the uh, start of people looking into Our Lady of Lourdes being devoted to her, the full-blown devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes came with the bigger image. Even the initial miracle attributed to Our Lady of Lourdes here, in the famous miracle attributed to the uh, image, to, to the devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes start with, was already associated with, with the bigger image the bigger image no i guess it's not if if it's not a matter of which the small small image or the big image you know, doesn't matter right? actually no what matters is that we are devoted you no know, to our lady of lords that is that is more important than debating on which is the bigger which one should be you no know, uh crowned or whatever but it is a possibility you know that it could be crowned when you crown when we, when we were thinking you no know, when we were petitioning for the canonical coordination of the the bigger image you no know, it is not to put aside the smaller image you no know, or to discard it you no know, if it indeed was the manuel flores original no, it is not to, no, to put her aside. No, because it's the same lady. <laughs> it's the same. No, it's the same blessed mother that we are honoring by crowning, by canonically crowning her. No, it's it's the same blessed mother. No, that is that is honored. No, perhaps we could do a replica of of the crown, the canonical crown, and crown also the the smaller image you no know, because it has also been the image which is more accessible you no know, no to the devotees especially those who are you no know, physically you no know, challenged they could not go up the high altar the grotto you no know, you no know. so it is also the the more accessible uh image of our lady of lords you no know. You see there, no, that even wherever we are, no, in whatever situation we are, the Blessed Mother makes herself accessible to us, no, <laughs> by the small image or the big image, 
No, if we want to go up, if we can go up, then we can go up. If, if we 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 cannot go up because we are physically challenged, then she is also there. No, so, so actually, as I've said about the Besa Pies, the Besa Pies is a ceremony, no, which is attributed to the to the big image. No, it is a ceremony. The the Besa Pies is actually the bigger image. No. Besamanto is another misnomer, <laughs> no, because the image of Our Lady of Lourdes is, uh, they have a term for it, no, does not have a manto, no, it does not have, just like the, the manto of, of, uh, of La Naval, Our Lady of the Holy Rosary of La Naval has a manto, no, but the, the image is, our image is, does not have any mantel. No, by which we could touch. We the the more tradi the tradition more, which is more uh, related to our devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes is besa pies. No, you kiss the feet of Our Lady. Actually, in the when the the, the national shrine was constructed. In its initial construction, if you would see the old pictures, no, there was no grotto. The high altar does not have any grotto. No, there was an altar, and there's a space in bet between the image and the altar, wherein the devotees can, can pass in between it and could, act, could actually kiss the feet. Of our Blessed Mother. So, walang grotto dati. Hindi, naka, in, hindi siya naka-enclosed. Makakalakad ka sa harap niya at maari mo siyang, maari mong halikan yung kanyang paa. And that is Besa Pies. Very wonderful. Yeah, I think I saw that uh, uh, photo during the fiesta, I think I saw that photo. Na wala nga talagang, <laughs> wala nga oh, talagang yeah. uh, grotto, but of course to the to the younger generation, di ba parang iba siempre iba na yung yung aming uh, nakita. I I believe it was. I don't know if it's true, but I think it was renovated, uh, yeah. alongside the Va Vatican II. Am I correct, Father? I just do not know that. But what I heard was they enclosed it. The enclosed the image in, in the grotto because I think at one point I, I, I have not verified it but somebody said told me that the crown was stolen <laughs> because it was re re very accessible no, and uh -huh. they do not have CCTV before no and so <laughs> yes. somebody stole the crown <laughs> oh so my they goodness. had to enclose enclose her in, in a grotto yeah. so that mm, but the, the problem is it she you can no longer kiss her feet. Yes. No way with, with that. No, you yeah. could no longer kiss her. And that's why they the best of yes there was actually that was a baptistry before. And the best of the the the, the, the that smaller image came out sometime during the 19th. I, I'm not so sure. No, just mm -hmm. later on also. Yeah. No. That's right. Because we have a question from a parishioner. His name is Peter Leocadio. Good morning, sir. His question is, were there any studies or comparisons about the other works of Manuel Flores for the baptistry image to be considered as his work? Or uh, if there are contrasting uh, details or features of uh, the baptistry image and the present altar image? We have been trying to do that to look for other works of, of Manuel Flores. No, uh, the problem is we could not find anything, anything about him, though he, he was considered famous during that time. No, they were saying, no, they were saying also that the Our Lady of Lourdes, there, there, there's some talk and speculation, no, uh, that the one, the Our Lady of Lords in Kabatikan, Pampanga, yeah, 
was done also, there, there are some speculation, was also done by Manuel Flores because it has the same posture as that of, of that we, the image that we have at the National mm -hmm. Shrine. No, mm -hmm. we have tried no, in do, doing some research on, on Manuel Flores, no, but we could not, as of now, we, had, we still have not seen anything, so, something about, some, about him, no, about his works. No, because the problem is, no, if he did really have some work, other works before, no, they might have been destroyed during the war, you know, in Intramuros also. We, mm -hmm. we are still trying to find out the, a bit about him. No, and hopefully, you no, know, we would be able to find something about him, you no, know, to do some research about him. But at, as of the moment, we still do not have anything. We have gone through the archives, you no, know, you no, know, and at the moment we still do not. He said that they, he's also from Pampanga, mm -hmm. you no, know, and that's as far as we could go. They say that he's also buried here in La Loma, there in La Loma. Mm. Maybe somebody could pick up from that and help us with, with the research on, on Manuel Flores, no, to finally you know, put this issue, this controversy on the smaller image, the bigger image, et cetera, et cetera. No, but as of the moment, no, it's it's we think you no know, but without any document documentations by by the the pictures that we have seen of the image in the porteria you no know, of, of the of intramuros that it could be that small that that small image could be you no know, because before we were quite we were saying that it is not you no know, it could not be the smaller image but but after doing so, seeing the pictures that were that we asked from our conference in Spain, we sort of also already considered. We are considering uh, personally on my part. No, I am considering that it could be the Manuel Flores, the original Manuel Flores, that smaller image that is called the Besa Pies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so to all. Uh... Uh, I know we have uh, uh, members of the audience here who are history majors, who are historians. Uh, if you can help us connect the dots, you are welcome to, to do so. Here's an additional question from uh, Mr. Leocadio. Before we move on to uh, the matter of images deepening our faith, uh, here's a one follow-up question. Are there any plans to revive the Best of Yes ceremony? Uh, it depends on the, on the on the national shrine, but I guess no. I think as part of the history of the image, no. I think it will be really worthwhile to revive the Besa Pies ceremony, no, because it's historical. It's something that has been done since it the image has, is in 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 Tramuros, no, because it's no. historical, but. Something the problem that with done. that is now we have her very Image high at the altar, no, and so it might be difficult. But perhaps we could, from time to time, no, even with the replica, no, have people kiss her feet, but not during this pandemic. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, so please stay safe and stay uh, healthy. No? Uh, yeah. okay. oh. uh, and again, we, we'd we love to hear, of course, from the, the parish priest anytime soon no, from the parish priest of Ensol, Reverend Father Jefferson Agustin Jeff, of the Capuchin yeah. Order of Friars Minor. You might want to suggest it to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of these days. The father. Yeah. Oh. Now, yes, now to the matter of... Uh, Again, the, this is a very uh, long discussion. Uh, I guess I would like even not to call it bone of contention you know, about the role that images play in our faith. Here's now a question from 
Joshua Pulmano uh, from grade 11. And his question is, how do you think physical icons and images enforce belief and faith without trading the line of idolatry? Because, because there's the Eastern Orthodox, right? That, that uses or that does not use iconography that much in worship. Please confirm this for us, Father. Please clarify this for us. Well, so, some really have just pictures like I icons, no? Yeah. But you know, there's a difference between an idol and an image. No, there's, there's, the two are, are very different, no? When the son, the son of God incarnated, he became human. No, he came as a human person, and that's that he became the sacrament of, of the Father. No, the visible, no, presence of somebody which is in who is invisible, and we have when we have images, no, not idols, images. We are not actually worshiping the image, no, but yeah. we are no praying or worshiping. No, if it's an image of Jesus, no, we are actually worshiping Jesus. No, yeah. no, so so that should be clearly be put in in mind. No, no, gee, our Lord no became became human and took a human form. Form. No, and oh, so why? It, we, it, it's it's very different from idol idol worship. No, it's very different because this one is 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 an image of of uh, of the Blessed Mother or Jesus our Lord. No. Yeah, of course, because of course, Tiba, we, we, that's the, the reason why we are, mm. you know, clarifying and, and discussing these things. We really want to, you know, to, to uh, enrich our faith, to deepen our faith, you know, mm. and uh, images, like the image of Our Lady of Lord, the very beautiful image, uh, help us, right? Help mm. us uh, yes. express our faith even more, right? Mm. And uh, yeah, we, we there, here's a, uh, Here's a, uh, uh, it's not really a question, but it's really a, um, ano ba to? how do I call this? But anyway, uh, he, uh, a message from uh, one of our audience members, his name is Gabriel Plegaria. Please correct my pronunciation, Gabriel, if I'm wrong. Uh, he says that just to share if, pan if the pandemic hadn't come or if, if kung walang pandemia, part of the canonical coronation would have been the ceremonia de besa yes am i correct father no yes yes part of it actually was was the thank you gabby for that i know gab no he was part of of uh, our preparations a member of our preparations for the canonical coronation no if indeed the the pandemic did not happen besa yes would have been done in one of this, those days leading to the to the canonical coronation but unfortunately no we have a pand we are in a pandemic so we opted not to you know, push through with with uh, the best of yes but i hope no in the future when the pandemic is gone and you no know, solved you no know, we could have we could you no know, again you no know, have the best APS done as part of the novenas to Our Lady of Lourdes. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember that. My goodness, uh, uh, we it's like we've been planning for it. We've been announcing it in all the masses. That's big lang. If I remember, big lang pandemic. Uh, so para, uh, mm. Now the question is, okay, so matutuloy pa ba? <laughs> matutuloy uh, pa ba? But um, sa awa ng Dios na irao siya na itawid. Father, mm -hmm. I, if, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, parang um, because of the pandemic restrictions, well, puro pari ang nasa loob ng simbahan, puro pari at oh. padre. Di ba, mm -hmm. Father? Grabe. Very few, and very few lay, lay people. Para puro mga pari lang ang pari, madre, and very, very few lay people are inside 
the church during the canonical coronation. But it, it's it's a uh, no, it's it's grasha rin, no biaya rin, no, because when we went for the procession of the canonical crowned image, no, a lot of people were out, no, yeah. and they're welcoming her, no, praying as we went through the the procession, no, kaya ano rin, ma, it's it was very touching and it was very emotional during the procession. The people waited for for the canonical crowned image to to be processed outside of of Lourdes, of the, the National Shrine. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, we have, uh, ayan, I, and at dinagdag ni, uh, ni, uh, ni Gabby, <laughs> Gab, ni Gabriel, abangan po natin ang launching, oy, mukhang exciting ito, magkakaroon ng launching ng coffee table book yeah. ng uh, Our Lady of Lourdes at maraming interesting facts. So definitely, that is something yes. to look forward to. Hopefully, no, in this process, no, again, yung, you know, the research and the production of knowledge, uh, and perhaps, you know, uh, filling the gap in history, kasi nga na the, the records were destroyed. Hopefully, this is a step towards that, to filling the, the gap, no, the coffee table book coming soon. Sa lahat po ng mga nanonood dyan, uh, please watch out for future announcements. Now, a question for me, Father, uh, because, um the the background it seems like i and please correct me again if i'm wrong uh the background of the filipino devotion to our lady of lord has been it's it's not really smooth sailing no uh, it began the devotion or the image the, the, the talk about the image began when we were still under the spaniards rule and then it over time when the Americans came in and then World War II came in, uh, our records were destroyed. And then we we slowly, you know, uh, gained independence after the war. We tried to revive uh, our country. Uh, and then we have, fast forward to today, we have the pandemic. But in all these events, you no, know, this, uh, rather tumultuous background the devotion remained yes and it, it 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 never it never fizzled it never faded if if any kahit nga pandemya father nakita ko nung fiesta ang dami pa ring mm -hmm. nandoon sa simbahan naghihintay at namimintuho doon sa imahen ng mahal na birhen ng Lourdes what kind of value do you think father uh, has developed in all of us uh because of our devotion to Our Lady of Lourdes? Well, first, the value that of trusting God, of trusting the Blessed Mother, you know, that even if we experience a lot of challenges in our life, you know, the Blessed Mother and God, you know, Jesus, His Son, mm -hmm. Her son is always there with us. No, she has never left us. No, even amidst all these you no know, trials that we have gone through, and we are always comforted. You no, know, with her presence. You no, know, with her being with us. You no, know. malaki kasi yung yung dating impact ng nanay palagi. You no, know, sa atin. No, and sa palagay ko yun yung nung yun yung isa sa mga naging no impact sa atin ng 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 ating devotion sa mahal na ina na yung ating pagtitiwala sa kanya ay nananatili no kahit na no merong ganito merong mga problema na dumarating kahit may sakit no lalo na sa mga may sakit na, Na ang isang value ay pagtitiwala, yung isa ay pag-asa, no? Na kung hindi man tayo gagaling, katulad nga ng sinabi ni ng ating hindi naman lahat ng nagpupunta ng Lourdes gumagaling, di ba? Pero gumagaling sa sakit, no? Pero naghihilog sila, 
no kahit hindi ka gumaling hinihilom yung yung sakit mo hindi yung sakit hindi yung sakit mo hinihilom no at nag pinanghahawakan natin yung yung pangako ng mahal na ina na na sinabi niya rin kay Bernadette Subiru no na nangangako siya na magiging maligaya tayo sa buhay na walang hanggan no kung dito no mayroong kapighatian kahit may kapighatian nandito ako kasama mo ko no at uh, wag kang wag kang ano mawala ng pag-asa dahil sa buhay na walang hanggan no nandoon na ang tunay na kaligayahan no yung pag-asa pananampalataya at pagtitiwala no ang ibinibigay sa atin ng ating mahal na ina no at kaya nga katulad na sinabi ko kanina no no palagi siyang nakatingala sa langit no yung imahe natin nakatingala sa langit no at sinasabi eh, no no look up no you yung whatever you do here sa lupa no be sure na yun ito'y magdadala sa iyo sa sa kalangitan kung ito'y pagpapakasakit then offer it up no to to the lord no at tayo magkita sa kaligayahan sa buhay na walang hanggan ayun nakakatuwa po yang uh... no yung pag-unawang ito no sa ating uh, devotion sa mahal na ina nakakatuwa po dahil yun nga maring you know yung paghihirap natin yung yung sakit yung mga sakit natin lalo na ngayon <laughs> di ba mm-hmm. it, it is always a challenge na gumaling sa sakit pero the internal pain often hidden it's the one that gets healed di ba and and mm-hmm. it's what Uh, pushes us to 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 live life no uh, in the spirit of humility in the spirit of uh, love and and faith and joy uh, and and good thing father you mentioned yung yung concepto ng nanay no ng ina because uh, have you, do you think father na uh, may role din kasi yung ating uh, kultura bilang mga Pilipino na talagang may pagpapahalaga sa ina so, sa nanay oh. bilang ilaw ng tahanan do you think no father ma, ano di, could have could it have contrib- contributed no, to our growing devotion oo oh, oh. malaki yung yung ating yung ano ng ating kultura impact ng ating kultura do sa ating debosyon sa sa mahal na ina no kasi tayo nga eh palagi no palagi naka sukbit sa nanay di ba <laughs> ganun kaya she no the devotion our mother our lady of lords gives us to so much comfort no sa sa ating pagmimintuho sa kanya no at palagi niyang tinutugunan yun no yung kanya mapag-along pagkalinga sa ating lahat no ayun ay kanyang binibigay a reflection of of yung tunay na isang nanay para sa ating lahat very wonderful and uh, very quickly father to end this uh, open forum a very quick question from from brother Achilles he asks what if bernadette bernadette subirus herself saw the image What do you think would she say? Well, she, she if she saw the image of Our Lady of Lords in the National Shrine, she might have said, she could, maari niya sabihin, no, this one is better than the one in the grotto. <laughs> But she would, I think, still say that what the, the mother that I saw in the grotto is even more beautiful than that wow no she would and no artist could ever i think in 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 her line of thinking no no earthly artist could ever capture the beauty that bernard saint bernadette subiru saw in the grotto of France Masabiel France no i think no the the, the thing that her line of thought no yung pag sinasabi nung sinabi niya yung nakita niya yung imahe na 
eh hey, hindi ya yeah, hindi ganyan yung itsura kahit na maganda yung yung imahe natin at napakaganda talaga ng imahe natin sa ano may nagsabi nga sa akin kaibigan kong pare no sabi niya sa akin alam niyo yung imahe niyo ng ng Lourdes diyan sa National Shrine ang Miss Universe ng lahat ng mga images ng Lourdes. <laughs> Sabi niya, ano, kasi napakaganda nga daw talaga. <laughs> ano, pero even then, no, even then, palagay ko sasabihin din ni Bernadette Subiru, mas maganda pa rin yung in-person na nakita ko sa grotto ng Masabit. Yes, and that is an enduring message of humility. for mm-hmm. all of us. Maraming salamat for your Thank time. You, Reverend Thank you, Reverend Father Eugenio Juanilo Lopez of the Capuchin Order Friars Minor. It's great to see you again, Father. And uh, we <laughs> hope that this won't be the last interaction <laughs> and discussion. Sana. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very Maraming much. Maraming salamat.